Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at dealing with uh, adding score and removing lives. So looking at the game screen, as we collide with monsters, we would like to reduce the number of lives by one each time we collide. And also we have collectible objects on the screen. So we have a blue gem and a red gem. So as we collect those objects, we want to increase the score. Okay, so currently, if I hover, if I uh, collide with a blue gem, nothing happens. If I collide with the uh, with a monster, I go back to the start of the level. Okay, like that, but it doesn't reduce my lives by one. So that's what we're going to look at during this um, tutorial. So in the last video or the last tutorial, we looked at displaying the score and the lives on the screen, and you can see those in the top. Uh, left hand corner of the screen up here. We use draw text events for those um, and we also declared um, some special variables called global variables and if you remember global variables are variables that store numbers that can be used in any object in the game. Okay so we'll take a very quick look at those and we declared the global.lives variable for three and the global.score at zero. Now you might decide that you might want to allocate more lives at the start of your game, and that's absolutely fine. And that's probably something that will come out through your testing, whether you, if you've got enough lives or not. But three is generally considered to be a standard number of lives in older games. So um, so that's uh, what we've gone with there. Um, score will always be set to zero at the start. And as of course, you're dealing with a game that the, the, the whole point is to get a lowest score as possible, which where, where you reduce your points. But that's entirely up to you. So what we're going to do now is to look at how we add, or how we're going to start with the lives actually. We'll, we'll start with lives and look at um, how we deal with um, colliding with the objects uh, and removing lives from from your um, from your from your lives count once you collide. So don't forget now we have um, parent objects in our in our game. So if we look at our uh, monster object, we have two child objects in that for that monster. Okay, so what? So when we talking about collisions and removing lives, we only need to deal with what happens when we collide with the white monster, because whatever happens when we collide with the white monster is carried through to the other ones anyway. Okay, so we're not dealing with how we collide with the blue and the red monster, only the white one. So let's have a look then at the player object where we're dealing with the collisions. So you can see I have a collision event here for what happens when I collide with the white monster. So I can open up that event, okay? And currently all it does, when we collide with the monster, it puts us back to the start positions of the X and the Y in game. I could do a restart level um, command instead, but we've just decided to move the uh, the, up, the the player back to the start of the game um, to try again. So what we need to do in the here now is to, uh, to um, write some code that's going to remove one of our lives once we collide with the monster as well. So we're going to use the, the, the variable global dot lives. So we're going to take uh, the new value of global dot lives is going to be equal to the old value of global dot lives, which is currently at three minus one. So each time we collide with the monster, it's going to create a new um, value for global.lives and it's going to be the current value of global.lives minus one. Okay, and I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of there. Okay, let's see if that works. So let's run the game. So my, my lives are currently three. I've got a white monster there. It's reduced my lives to two. Perfect. Okay, so let's test what happens if we collide with the blue monster as well, just to show that that actually does work as well. Okay, let's come to the blue monster, and that reduces our lives to one. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. So that's working fine. So let's close that game preview down. Okay, so let's ha uh, look then at what happens when we collide with the gems, because currently we haven't got a collision object at all for what happens when we collide with the gems. So first off, let's do that. Let's decide, let's uh, look at what, we, what happens when we collide with the gems. So if you remember, we're going to create a collision event with an object, and we're going to go with, uh, let's do the blue gem first, which is at the top. So what happens when we collide with the blue gem? Well, I want to destroy the object and add, 
what should we say 250 for a blue gem 250 points to my score okay so in this case we need to do a, um, a with other um, event because we don't want to destroy the object um, we need to destroy the other object because we're currently in the player object if you remember so we do with other okay we're going to open a um, curly brace and we're going to go um, instance instance underscore destroy okay and then we're going to close the curly brace okay so let's just make sure that works for us first before we go any further so we're colliding with a blue um, gem so the blue gem is there so it destroys the blue gem okay perfect okay so now we're going to look at what um, also what we do when we collide we're going to um, use global dot score because that's the, the variable we use for storing the score the new value of global dot score is going to be the current value of global dot score plus 250 points okay and we can do a semicolon I'm going to copy this text because I want to do the same thing for um, my red gem or I'm going to give a different value for that so remember we said about where possible let's uh, make it easier so we're going to copy that so we haven't got to retype it and they're going to create another event for a collision with my red gem and I'm going to just highlight all of that text and I'm going to paste in my code for my last object and this time for my red gem I'm going to add I'm going to add let's say I add 500 points for my red gem same thing I want to destroy the other instance and this time I'm going to add 500 okay so let's see if that works okay so run the game so if I just if I click on the if I hit the red the blue gem I should get 250 points which I do if I hit the red gem I should get 500 points which take my score to 750 and then if I hit my monster it takes one of my lives away excellent okay so the next thing we're going to look at then is do we want to allocate points when we shoot the monster well yes we do so let's have a little look at that so let's close this down so we're going to look at now um, is it on the monster object uh, let's check Let's open up the white monster. Nope, so it's on the bullet object. So when the bullet collides with the monster. So currently when the bullet collides with the monster, we destroy um, the, um, the instance of the bullet and we destroy the monster. We also want to um, give ourselves some points. So let's say then that when we destroy a monster, we want to add 300 points to our score. So we want to make um, the new value of global.score equal to the old value of global.score plus 300. Okay, so every time we shoot a monster, it'll add 300 to our score. So don't forget, semicolon to finish that. So I think that's all of the scoring and lives taken care of. So let's uh, have a little look at what happens when we run this then. So I collect my gems. We know that works, I just tested that. So let's um, let's shoot a monster. Okay, you can see it's added 300 to my score. I'm gonna collect all the collectibles. Okay, let's get the key as well. Don't wanna be allocating points for a key. You could allocate points for the key if you wanted to. But we're not going to. I'm not going to do that. So I'll come round. I just want you to watch what happens with the score. So I've got a thousand three hundred and fifty points. So I've gone through the lock. I go to the exit. 
Now, what should happen is when I continue the game, when I'm going to the next level, my score is retained. Now, it resets my score to zero. So there's a problem, okay? And the reason for that is that each time I start a new level, okay, all of the objects are redrawn. So that's why we can't use score and lives on the player object because um, every single time the player object is created it, um, in a level, it, it, it will clear all of the variables back to zero because we've said that at the start of the, of the um, object. So if we come back off here and look at um, our um, game event up here, we've got on create, when it's, the game is created, um, when um, the game's created, all these variables are set. Okay, so each time this uh, level is restarted, it's, it's creating this game event again, so it's resetting all the variables. So there's an issue there that we're going to look at in the next video about um, about dealing with uh, or keeping those scores as we go through the game. So we're going to look at those uh, in the next in the next video. And we're also going to start looking at the final part of the of the game, which is dealing with um, moving between rooms um, and uh, windscreens and things like that. So um, those are the last few videos that we're going to be dealing with. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.